Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from FreeSalonEducation.com here with another point of view haircut. And we're going to work on a classic A-line bob with one of my guests in the salon. Uh, we're in a GoPro camera on my head. It could get a little shaky, so hold on to your seats. But we're going to take you through a half an hour of the wet cut, the blow dry, the dry cutting. This is all meant for hairstylists. So I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to take a vertical section straight down the back of the head. Um, this is really just a section, obviously, the, the left side from the right side. And so I'm using the comb to do that. Then we're going to take a slight diagonal forward section. It, and when I say slight, I really mean slight. It's going to follow the occipital bone all the way across to behind the ear. And really, the reason I section the occipital bone down for the first section is there's a big groove in the head that happens and the head shape really shifts down. So if I section the occipital bone down and I cut it flat at the skin um, using no tension whatsoever, it actually creates almost a 45 degree angle on its own. So instead of trying to elevate it right away and then getting that kind of ducktail flip in the back, this gives me a nice solid line to start the graduation in the hair. So I go through and I cut my first section just using little um, little cuts with the scissor, I guess is the easiest way to say it. And then I go through and I just clean it up using the tip of the scissor. I go through um, cutting the hair from the right to the left, and then I go through cutting from the left to the right. And the reason for that is I start in the center and I work my way out because I want to push weight consistently. Um, if I try to cut everything from the right to the left throughout the whole haircut, what's going to happen is the left side is going to be longer than the right. We've all been in that situation where we get done with the cutting and graduation and we have one side longer than the other, and that's because we're pushing weight from the get-go in one direction. And when that happens, you end up with a longer side. So just being consistent. If I cut hair one way on one side, I cut hair the same way on the other side. Um, so now... You can see, I'm just going to take this out. I'm not actually going to cut right here, but you can see the angle that it already creates when you cut that right at the skin. So depending on their occipital bone, depending on how their head grooves in, um, you know, you may want to change the elevation a bit, but for the most part, when you cut that, you're going to have a nice slight graduation, just cutting it right at the skin. And it'll actually save you a lot of time in the salon as well. Just section it from the occipital bone over to the ear, and cut it flat at the skin and then start your um, elevation from there. So I'm going to use that as a guideline. Slight diagonal forward. The reason I'm working diagonal forward instead of straight vertical is because it's more comfortable for my hand. So I, I'm sure you guys have worked vertically in the salon and sometimes you got to put your body in a weird position and this keeps you from having to do that. Keeps you comfortable which will keep you consistent. So we're going to go through following the head shape a little bit. As I work down into the occipital bone area, you'll see my elevation of my hand drop just a little bit. But for the most part, I'm just using that as a guideline. Now everything's being overdirected back, not to the center back. Um, if I overdirect everything to the center back, it's going to push too much weight behind the ear. And then we're going to end up with that dog ear kind of look at the end. So I want to just overdirect everything straight back from where it lives. You can see that last section straight back from the head, not overdirecting to the center back, just straight back, create that graduation. It looks really nice. Now, same thing, I'm going to jump to the right side. I don't like to finish one side, then go to the other. I like to see it all develop at the same time. If you like to do one side all through, you can do that. It's, you know, that's not, not for me to say that, but I think uh, it's nice to be able to see the whole thing unfold in front of you. So now, the difference in this side is my fingers are pointing down. And the reason for that is I want to keep my combing consistent. We talked about the cut in the beginning. Um, making sure that you're cutting the same way. You also want to make sure you're combing the same way. So I'm always combing towards the center. You can also see I'm going to do a little cross check after I cut my first um, parting. And the reason for that is just to make sure that I'm, I'm 
on track to have a balanced haircut. Um, you know, I could cut this whole entire right side, then check it, but I might as well check it after the first cut just to make sure that everything seems aligned and then I'm good to go to finish the rest of it. I really like the point of view haircuts because it gives you, you know, it's a hairdresser point of view and this is what we like to see. I, I like that for a lot of the mentors that I have, I wish I could just sit over top of them and, and watch them cut hair. So um, that's why I don't like to edit these too much. I like that it's a half an hour. Um, I think if you're not a hairdresser, you probably won't watch this and I'm, I'm cool with that. I, I like the fact that, you know, hairstylists can see somebody cutting hair, a full haircut non-edited if you see me make a mistake i'm going to tell you about it in the haircut so uh, again over directing straight back following the head shape a bit so my elevation is low right now and then when i recomb it uh, it goes a little bit higher now it's a nervous habit but i like to go through and just kind of see the build up you can see that angle uh, slightly in there and that's what I like to see. She's got finer hair. Um, and this is definitely a graduation is a hard haircut on fine hair because you don't get such a buildup of weight. Um, so I like to see how it's building. And now I'm going to separate the front and the back. We're going to clip away the front. I'm going to clean up the part real quick. Staying clean while you're working. It's, it's one of the most important things you can do. Um, you know, don't don't get in a rush in the salon. This is what is going to separate you from everyone else. Just make sure that you're working clean. And if it doesn't look clean, fix it before you move on. Don't just get in a hurry and go. Now I'm going to work on top of my fingers at this point because I'm higher on the head. It wouldn't be as comfortable if I was working palm to palm. So if you're not going to be comfortable, then then switch. You don't have to cut the same way the entire haircut. So I'm cutting on top of my fingers. You can see the elevation looks like it's straight out from the head, but it's really not. It's um, If you look at the head shape and how it curves up, that very last piece that I'm cutting is actually almost straight out, almost at zero degrees. So um, I'm actually building up quite a bit of weight in this haircut by over directing it straight back. I'm working with the round of the head with the parting, so diagonal back at this point, but everything is still coming straight back from the head. Now we're gonna work the same thing on the other side, still vertical, split the head in half, take right at the center, uh, the center point of the head, a division point, I guess. I'm going to clip that away, comb everything back. I'm still going to be working on top of my fingers. So uh, body position is going to stay the same. I'm going to be on the left side of the head. I'm going to take my parting first, then I'm going to move over to it. And this, because I'm wearing a camera on my head, sometimes I don't know what the angle looks like. So uh, you, we may lose a little bit of the head, but... Uh, I'll try to describe it the best I can. Everything is coming straight out from the head still, over-directed straight back, so still the same exact way as the other side. What this does give you is a good vision of the scissor and the hand. I'm using my Type C2 scissor, Mizutani Type Z2, um, that I sell on the shop, uh, shopfse.com. The thing I like about this scissor is you can see the fatness of the blade towards the tip. It's got a lot of power in it. Um, you know, for thicker hair, it's also really great because of how powerful it is at the very tip. But, you know, I, I just like a quality tool. And uh, the Mizutani Type Z2 is my favorite scissor. It's my go-to. So still cutting straight up. Everything coming straight back. If you guys are wondering what comb I'm using, I'm using a YS Park 339 comb. Uh, I like this because it's small, so it's easy for tighter spots in the head. Um, but it's also got really good tension to it. So um, even in the wide teeth, there's still tension. Now here's where you're going to see me shift. 
and I decided to take the last section and cut palm to palm and cut with my fingers down. The reason I did that was because my elevation was going to be lower. And then as I worked up, it's still comfortable for me right here. So I don't think there's a reason to stay the same just to stay the same. Um, it's kind of like when you're highlighting hair and you know, you're doing a, a consistent weave throughout the head. I, I don't believe in that. I think the hair is organic and the way that it falls, uh, the way that you color it, the way that you cut it, it's, it's really a feeling when you're cutting hair and what's going to make you feel comfortable throughout it. So if you need to change your body position to stay consistent, then change your body position. And that's the reason I did that there. Now I comb everything down. You saw me tap her ear a little bit. That just releases a little bit of tension around the ear because the ear is going to lift the hair up when it's dry. So I like to cut that bold line in and then just let it be, especially on the weak side. That was on her, on her part side. So the hair is going to be a little bit weaker. I'm not elevating the hair right now in that part um, because I want that line to be strong on that side. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm combing all the hair down. We'll see if I tap the ear here. I should. But these are the things that you notice when you record yourself. And this is something I would challenge everyone to do. Um, a GoPro camera isn't that expensive. So if you have one, put it on and cut hair with it because you can watch yourself and see what you do. I didn't tap the ear there. But, you know, we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. The weight is a little bit different. Because she has fine hair, it's really not going to build up that much anyways. But... These are things that you notice when you watch yourself cutting hair. So we cut that line. Now what I'm going to do is comb everything forward, and we're going to work on the fringe. Um, that's what makes these haircuts simple. If you map out a haircut, um, you can get through it really quick. So we're going to take it right at the part. I'm standing on the heavy side, so I'm standing on her right side. And the elevation is going to be straight, straight on with her face, vertical section there. And we're going to cut it straight up. What that's going to do is build up weight because she's got fine hair. But we're going to start the angle. So I'm going to keep taking vertical sections across. Some might call that horizontal. Um, straight across her head and over directing over the parting. So what that's doing is pushing the weight over towards the right. So it's going to give her a nice angled fringe but keeping the weight on there. Because if I were to elevate it straight up in the air, then that would remove the weight. And that would be something I would do if she had really thick hair. If she had really thick hair, I would not. I would change the elevation a little bit to remove more weight. But because she's got finer, a finer density, we're going to just keep it the way it is. I'll work my way across until I run out of hair. There we go. Just keep following that guide. And then you have a nice angled fringe. And now I just want to connect the two sides. So I'm going to take a diagonal forward section there, drop it, walk over to the other side so that I keep consistent, use my guideline there and just cut the corner. That corner will start to connect everything and then the dry cut, I'll connect it even more. So now we can move into the blow dry. Amika sent me this cool blow dryer. It's negative ion, so it helps dry the hair faster. Um, and honestly, until I had a blow dryer, I was on vacation recently, and there was a blow dryer without ions and I hadn't used one in a long time. And it took me a long time to blow dry even my hair and I don't have a lot of it. So um, I think the ions make a big difference. They seal the cuticle, they push out the moist the water, keep in the moisture. So um, so I really dig this blow dryer, I like it a lot. I'm using the Vess uh, 2000 brush. It's got a lot of tension to it, but it's also great for flat wrapping and uh, leafing the hair to just create a really smooth texture in there. So we're gonna wrap this around her head, working at both directions. The, I think the key to blow drying something smooth for cutting 
is just make sure that you're not blow drying it in one direction. Blow dry it in multiple directions to um, get rid of all the calyx in the hair and smooth it out nice. So you'll see me wrapping it one way, then we wrap it back the other way. Using your head is almost a big roller uh, and just forming the hair to the head. Now she's got fine hair and a lot of people might think there's no volume. That's why we're doing a little bit of leafing to get a little volume at the root. Um, and then at the end we can add texture products to build up the, um, the body and the hair and create texture. But I like to have it nice and smooth, have it naturally falling the way that it should when I go into the dry cutting. You can see the leafing technique so I'll blow dry it forward and then I brush it back a bit. And when I brush it back, I part it, and then I do a little bit of leafing. And there you go. You can see right around the crown, a little bit of leafing. It's going to give a little lift. Um, but really polishing the base. We're working right now from scalp to mid shaft. And then at the end, we'll polish it with an iron just to get the ends. But really my focus right now is polishing that mid shaft. You can see I use my pinky to keep the hair parted. And then I can take my section, follow it with the blow dryer. Never move the blow dryer around. I think one thing I've always said is you never see anybody with good hair in a hurricane. This is the whole point here. Don't go crazy with a blow dryer. The blow dryer is not the tool. The brush is the tool. The blow dryer is just the air flowing over top. Use the nozzle to, to concentrate the air on one section and use the brush to do the lifting. You can see my blow dryer doesn't barely move. It's just flowing the air over top of the cuticle, making it lay nice and create that shine. Again, I'm working the hair back, but then I'm going to work it forward. I don't want to lay the hair flat anywhere. So we, we say in the salon, don't blow dry the hair with a parting. Uh, basically what that means is pretend like there's no part there whatsoever. Blow dry it back and forth until you work out the parting. Then you can part the hair wherever you want it. And that's the key to a great blow dry. So we're going to work it forward, working it around the head. working through that crown. And you can see how nice it's polishing out. A little bit of lifting right around uh, the curve of the head there. All right, now we're going to go through with our iron. Again, Amika sent us this iron. It's cool. It starts off blue because it's cold. As soon as it heats up, it goes green. And what I'm going to do is take a diagonal back section. And I like working on a diagonal when you're smoothing hair because of the fact that you don't want to create creases in the hair with a smoothing iron. So just going diagonal back instead of horizontal um, you can take bigger sections through it. And again, because we focus so much on the blow dry from scalp to mid shaft, now we can just polish the ends through. I'm doing a slight curve. Don't bend it too much. Like you want it to be very natural looking uh, in the end result. So just kind of follow the cheekbone as you're bending the hair with the iron. Just give it a nice little bevel that'll help you with the haircut. Um, it'll give a nice shape to your haircut, but don't curl it too much with the iron. Still working diagonal back. You can see I don't even focus on getting it at the base because I already accomplished that in the blow dry. So 
Some people rush through their blow dry too quickly and then they have to iron the entire head and that takes forever. Um, I like to just go through and make this a polishing point and just, you know, focus on that and not worry about the rest of it because I've already taken care of it in the blow dry. And we'll just go through the top layer, little slight polish. There we go. I had a teacher in beauty school that said to me, I watched a DVD once and I saw this very smooth, beautiful uh, Bob haircut, um, or graduated Bob, A-line Bob, whatever it was. And they said to me, you know, the reason it looks so good is because somebody went through and they used the products and they flat ironed it and all this stuff. And, um, and it was almost like a discouraging way of saying, you know, not no, a normal person couldn't make it look like that. Well, they could, as long as they knew that you need to focus on the blow dry. The blow dry is most important and go through the iron, go through the steps. Don't rush, um, your hair. And then you can have hair that looks like that. Um, it's not an unattainable thing as long as you take the time and um, you really care that much about the hair. You know, I watch videos. Um, I, I've taught in salons for 10 years, and I think the biggest thing is we just rush through it and we don't focus on the little details um, and we and we try to skip things. Anytime you try to skip something, it doesn't turn out the way that it should. So don't skip the steps. Go through, polish it, make it perfect. That. That's what you, that's what our craft deserves. That's what being a hairdresser is all about. Um, it's making hair perfect. You're creating a piece of art um, through there, no matter who it is. It doesn't have to be a model. And that's what I like about the point of view haircuts. This is me in the salon. You can see the salon behind me. Um, it's a normal day. And we're taking time. We're going through, making sure that the hair looks great. That's the service that we want to provide for our guests. So we're almost there, finishing up the final details, following the head shape. You can see I'm just really just following their cheekbone there. And this particular guest in my salon, she drives from Staten Island, which is a two and a half hour drive. Um, she saw us on YouTube and wanted to come in. And she makes the drive every, I think, five weeks to get her hair cut. She, I don't color her hair. I think, I don't know who colors it, um, but she makes the drive for the haircut. And, you know, it's just really cool to see. And this is really what it's all about. If she's going to drive that far, I want to make sure that she's got a perfect haircut. So don't be afraid to get a camera and just and create this stuff. Um, this is something that... You know, we started freesaloneducation.com just as something fun to do. Um, and it's, you know, turned into things that we never thought it would. So go for whatever you're looking to go for. And, but I think even just filming your haircuts, you can watch it back and you can critique yourself, I think is cool. And you put it out on the internet and everyone critiques it. So, um, you know, you got a, a million coaches out there that can help you out and, and direct you. Final little detail, working in the back. This is something a lot of people would grab a tiny iron because they didn't work the blow dry right. So they'd have to go into the very nape of the neck and get that tiny iron to try to polish it out. I don't have to do that because of the blow dry. So just make sure that, again, focus on the blow dry. The iron should be just a nice little polish at the very end. Okay, now we're going to go in. We're going to work the dry cut. You can see that it's a pretty solid line from the very beginning, but because it's wet hair, it's not perfect. We did the blow dry, so now I want to go in with the tip of my scissor, and I'm just going to work that line. I'm not going to go in with a lot of scissor. You want to just use the tip because that's going to really create that perfect structured line in there, and it's not going to push too much weight. Really, the fact is, if you go in and you try to cut it with your whole entire scissor, it's going to push weight, no matter what scissor you have. So go in with just the tip of the scissor, go through there and define that line. You can see how 
straightest looking through there. And I'll work that line until I think it's exactly the way that I want it. Uh, and this could, you know, I could spend five minutes doing this and just to make sure that it's exactly the way I want it. We're going to comb through it. I'm going to pick it up. And then I see a couple pieces move out of the pl out of place. So I'll go through and I'll recut it with the tip. Just keep working it. I like to even have my guest shake her head back and forth and see how the hair falls in place. And if it if there's a couple pieces out of place, then I'll go through and I'll keep defining the line. It's a nice little close-up of working the line some more. Picking up the hair, making sure it's falling the way I want it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Just working that tip, straightening out the line. Now I'm going to elevate the hair slightly. I'm going to do a deep point cut, but barely cut anything. All I'm doing is just adding a little air to the haircut. Um, she's got finer texture, so I don't want to take out a lot of weight. But to add a little bit of pieciness to it is okay, and it's going to lighten up the haircut. So when you put product in it, she'll have some texture in there. Plus, I did overdirect everything over the parting, so what's going to happen is she's going to have a lot of heavy weight build up. Now I'm going to do a slide cutting technique right around the face just to create some beveled edges in there and some pieciness right around the face. So I'm going to slide the scissor half closing it right around the cheekbone area just to piece it out a little bit. It's a little bit darker on that side. On the other side you'll be able to see it even more. So we're going to comb it towards her face. That iron work helps with the way that it's going to fall. I'm going to go through with the scissor half closing and just following that cheekbone, slide cutting out, creating those pieces. There we go. We'll check how it falls. Then when I go through, I'm going to pick up the hair with my scissor, and I'm just going to add a little bit of pieciness to the fringe. I don't want it to be too heavy. She likes a piecier fringe, so just cut into it. And then the last little bit, I want to frame out the cheekbone. So I'm going to use the point of the scissor and just create what I want it to look like. Because of the blow dry, it allows me to have the hair falling naturally and I can just go in and cut into it. Now I'm going to go through and just polish it one more time with the blow dryer. And the reason I do this is because it's going to lay the cuticle flat again. Uh, we went through and we cut it a little bit so it's going to soften everything, adds a little bit more shine to it. Um, so once I do that, the haircut will be finished. But I love and it gets all the excess hair that I cut Anything that I, I point cut through there just gets it all out of there and, and creates that beautiful shine to the haircut. Um, just finishes it off at nice. I pretty much do this on any haircut that I do, uh, especially medium length to short because it just gets that excess hair out of there. Now we're just going to style it. We're seeing what she thinks. You'll get a little glimpse of it at the end. But I love the line. I love the structure. She has really fine hair, but it doesn't look fine at this point. Nice and full. It's got a really great angle. Nice tuck around the cheekbone area. Um, you can see this. I slowed it down so you guys can really see the end result. But 
you see how strong that line is and it just hugs her cheek right there so hope you guys enjoyed this haircut i love doing the point of view haircuts for you guys um please let me know if there's anything else you want to see and uh, check us out on freesaloneducation.com follow us on facebook and youtube and make sure you subscribe to us because we got many many more haircuts to come so thank you guys for watching we'll see you on the next video thanks